Hey there, Ride the Car Guy here, and today, let's take the heads off the VK. Today we're gonna to make some more progress on the VK teardown. Now, we're of course gonna start with our harmonic balancer or crank pulley today, take off the timing cover, and then kinda of see how far we can go from there. If you wanna check out the videos leading up to this point, you can check out the upper right-hand corner of your screen where I have a playlist created from pulling it out of the truck to cleaning it up to getting it, of course, to this point. Not much intro today, let's just jump right into it. Now before we can start digging into our timing, we have to go ahead and take off our last pulley, which is our crank pulley or harmonic balancer. Now there's a lot of ways you can pull this off. I have the standard claw adapters, but unfortunately that's not gonna work for this particular style. So I went and got a universal pulley puller, and uh, you can use, you know, there's ones that they make that are just a plate, and you drive two screws in, because these are uh, threaded holes, and they take an M6 by one thread. So if you wanted to get some bolts for that, you basically screw them in, there's a plate here, and then you drive another sort of screw through and it pulls it out. To save a little money, I went and rented one from my local parts store. This is just a universal kit. And uh, you know, you can of course buy these, but I use them so infrequently, I don't really see a reason to go, go buy one. So save a little money, rent one, it's free, and we're gonna use it to pull it off. Before we can pull off the pulley, of course, we need to take this bolt off. And in the back, I used a flywheel turner and I actually locked it against the side of my stand. You know, you have the big bolt that goes through and I figured, hey, I can just kind of jam my, my flywheel turner in there as opposed to buying the special, you know, flywheel locking tool or drive plate locking tool. And so that way we can get an impact on here, try to run it off. If that doesn't work, we can use a breaker bar and this won't rotate. This is a 19 millimeter and we're gonna start with our impact because of course that would be easiest, right? Let's see. All right, so I don't like to run my, uh, my Milwaukee impact that long. So I just went and grabbed my cheap Harbor Freight one and just hammered the hell out of it till it came out. So let's take a look here, see how many threads there are. Yeah, there's a ton of threads, okay. And a lot of used oil. Kind of strange, all right. Maybe the front seal's leaking, I don't know. But uh, put it in about halfway, and then we're gonna grab our little puller. And it's designed with little teeth that sit on each side here like this. And then you just slide the puller on and basically turn it until it pulls the pulley off. So I'm just gonna install these. Let's take a look here. In fact, we need this off too, hold on. So I just slide these in place. There's one, grab the other one. We go and just slide it on and turn it till it's locked in place. Let's go all the way up to the very edge. There we go. Cool. And then we just turn this till it hits the center. Very cool. All right. It's really nice actually. So I'll tighten this down and I'll show you what it looks like. So here's what it looks like. You just grab the little teeth here and they grab onto the side of the pulley and then you drive this through into your partially removed bolt and that will pull the pulley off. Now, it's actually nice because this is a this has a, like a conical insert and this is a cone head, so it kind of like slides right in there so it doesn't slip off. So let's pull it off. Looks like a standard ratchet will fit right in the back of that, which is pretty nice. There we go. And then we just turn it. Oh yeah, can already feel it coming off. Nice. Very, very easy. All right, we, uh, I didn't pull the uh, center bolt out far enough, so I have to pull this assembly off real quick. So you can just back it off like this and then just back the bolt off. There we go. There we go, now it's off. So with that off, just back this out and then back this all the way out and we're there. All right, that was pretty simple. We have, uh, the seal actually looks good, but we are now going to take off our timing cover, which is pretty exciting. Get to see the whole front guts of the engine. And there are, I think there's like 30 or there's 20 something bolts. And so here's where we're gonna have to get really creative with our organization. And uh, I'll show you how I'm gonna do it once we start taking them off. But there's a particular order, which I'll show you on the screen here in a couple minutes. And then there is, uh, it has to go in in a particular order and out in a particular order, and each one of these can be different. So we gotta make sure they all go in the correct place. 
So for organization, this is the route that I'm taking. Uh, we have this, I mean, frankly, beautiful drawing of the engine. I'm not even sure you can tell the difference between the two, but this is the drawing. And I'm going to actually puncture small holes. And when I take out a bolt, I'm going to puncture the hole, put it in there, and then I'll probably number it too, just because I'm neurotic about it. But in the manual, each one of these bolts is numbered in the order in which you take them out or put them back in. So you, we can obviously transfer those corresponding numbers over to, uh, over to our actual template here. Hope that makes sense. That's how we're going to do it. I'm going to go grab my uh, 10 millimeter and then we're going to start pulling these off. Once they're off, we just have to cut away some of the RTV and this thing should come right off. Now I'll put on the screen the order in which they need to be removed. So the way that I do this folks, and I want to make this clear, is I switch the numbers for you. So in the manual it says like 1 through 28 and then remove in reverse order shown. I'm showing you the actual order to remove them. So this is to remove them. And then the next one is to how to put them back in. So when you go to reassemble it, this is how you would reassemble it. I'm going to go ahead and just do a uh, time lapse for this. You don't need to watch me take out 28 bolts and we'll just speed through it and I'll only stop and say something if it's, you know, noteworthy. All right, let's do it. So I removed all of the ones on the front, but it looks like, I mean, I can obviously see there's one, two, three, possibly four bolts on the bottom that the manual doesn't mention. It probably assumes that you remove the upper oil pan first, which no, we're not doing that. So I'm going to take out the four here before we attempt to peel this off. They are bigger. They look like 12s. Hold on. Yes, they are 12s. I also made a modification to my beautiful piece of art. That's gonna be the bottom, so I know where those bolts go in the bottom as well. All right, well, we have a bit of an issue here, and let me show you what it is. We have all of the bolts out, except for this one, and you'll notice that if we try to back it out, I don't think we're gonna have enough space to back it out without hitting our oil cooler. So I backed this bolt out as far as it would go, and it looks like it clears the threads. So I think we're ready to rock. Let's just go up and start pulling it off and see if we end up getting interference. Also, here's the final product of my organization method, if you're interested. Uh, here's the bottom, like I, like I uh, drew out earlier. We have the three bolts, obviously the fourth one we can't get out. And then here's the rest of the 28 bolts up top. I'm going to go very carefully set this aside somewhere where it won't be bothered. All right, I'm going to remove the knock sensor sub harness. Just going to pull it off the front. I'm still not going to disconnect it from the knock sensors yet because it's just really, it's honestly just not in the way. So I'm going to fiddle with this thing for 10 minutes and pull it out. God, I hate these connectors. There. All right, so that's away. I'm just gonna grab a plastic scraper and start to pry away. Again, any, any of these gasket surfaces, you really don't want to want to damage, right? So, let's see here. I've done this a couple times before and uh, frankly hated it, but I'm trying to find an area where there is a flat surface on the back yeah, like right here. So I'll show you a picture of this. There's a bolt that protrudes and it has a little sleeve that protrudes. And then we have this flat side over here. So we want to be very gentle with this because you could be, you could very well crack this if you're not careful. But I'm going to just very gently get an implement in here and try to pry it away. There we go. We just need a starting point. That actually didn't take much effort. That's, that's not bad. Normally I'd be concerned, but I think this side has the leak anyway, so there might be a couple breaks in it that'll, that'll start to tear. So I'm gonna do the same over here. What I like to do is slowly work my way around and I'm gonna get my plastic scraper back. So we kind of have a starting point. We know that this part is broken open 
and then we can kind of go along with another scraper's other, you know, non-marring implement and continue along. And if we find any issues or if we find a lot of tension somewhere, we know that we may have missed something or the seal is particularly difficult in that spot. So we have a nice big gap forming on both sides. And so I'm just sort of working around and seeing where our tension is. We have some tension here, obviously, because it's still pretty tight. So I'm going to start working on both sides, just working my way down. I'm getting pretty annoyed. I might go read for a couple minutes on the Titan forms and see how people got this off. Because I can see a gap all through this entire V, down, down most of the way to this, down to the sides and I cannot find a bolt that would be holding this in. And so uh, to avoid doing any you know, crazy damage or anything, I'm gonna just go read real quick and see if I can find something on it. So here's what I think the problem is. We have a guide pin here, and that's really not of much consequence, except for the fact that since we do have a guide pin, we can't pull up on the timing chain cover, right? It must come off this way. And on the bottom, there's a huge amount of liquid gasket holding this entire bottom surface onto the upper oil pan. So the reason it feels so tight, you know, I'm, I'm guessing, I'm hypothesizing that all of this gasket surface, since it has to be slid this way, is a lot harder to pull off than it is pulling it off, you know, like this. So we're trying to slide it this way instead of trying to pull it off this way. I say all that to say, that uh, let's go pull off the upper oil pan first, and then this should come right off. I'm just gonna install a couple, uh, a couple bolts back in, maybe like one, two, three, four, just a couple of them, just so when we do pull that off, nothing falls off or anything crazy like that. Woo! <laughs> Going for a little ride there. Well, that was really easy. To start, we need to remove the lower oil pan before we get to the upper. All right, have a baggie ready for some organization, and we're gonna pull them off in this order. Should all be 10 millimeter, and hopefully they're all the same bolt. If they aren't all the same bolt, then we'll have to do a little more organizing, but I think they are. This will be fun. This is like the first time we're gonna be able to see our crank. All right, this is of course sealed, but it's not gonna be as crazy as the front cover or anything, so we should just be able to get a little wedge in here and pull this puppy out. I thought I had a seal cutter, so it uh, turns out I don't. So I will be uh, picking one up in very short order because this is uh, kind of annoying. But in the meantime, I'm gonna have to get serious with some metal tools. I know it's probably not gonna do much, but I'm gonna cut as much as I can with a razor blade here. There we go. Yes. Now we are talking. That's what a seal cutter is supposed to do for us. Ah, yes. Okay. I'm gonna keep doing that all the way around here. I'm sure getting all kinds of shit in there, but whatever. Yes. Excellent. Oh, a lot of crap in here. Man, there's a lot of shit in this oil. Yikes. Let's take a look at it. So for starters, we have that. That looks like a, like a desiccated rubber band or something. It's stuck to the bottom of the pan. Yeah. Is that a rubber band? I have no idea what this is. It's uniform? Yeah. That's an old rubber band. How in the hell did that end up in the bottom of the oil pan? We also have all kinds of like sludge down here. Oh yeah, look at that. Let's wipe that off. Yeah. I mean, obviously, right, this is the spot where if you're gonna have a bunch of shit, this is where you're gonna want it because this is, you know, oil sits in here to be picked up by the strainer and then goes through the oil filter and then gets up to obviously all the critical components, but just makes you wonder, right? Let's take a look in the upper pan now. See how that looks. Oh, uh, okay. 
So there's just a ton of like grit and I guess carbon buildup. I don't even know what that is. Well, I mean, I just wanted to do this to really just show you what's going on in here, but we're gonna deal with that once we take it off, of course. Well, that was the point of this rebuild, right? Figure out what's going on with it and clean it up and fix it. Let's move on. Now it looks like there are 16 bolts holding this in and there are four different types. So guess what we get to do again? Yay, another drawing. So uh, I of course did the drawing like this, fronts here, and then I'm just gonna take them out and do the same thing that I did before and just make sure they're all you know, in the proper place. Here is the order you need to do to take them out and then here is the order to put them back in. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually transfer so the other ones that I took out on the other board, uh, I'm gonna put in here, because I already took out three of them, right, from, up, from the front in an attempt to take off the front cover. So I'm going to go grab those and transfer them to here. So 10, 14, 11, and this is, I believe, 13, but we're leaving that in. So, all right, here we go. All right, these are all 12 millimeter. Uh, I'm gonna break them all loose in the right order and then pull them out. Number eight is actually below the uh, lower oil pan. 15 and 16 are actually behind the, uh, behind the drive plate and they're 10 millimeter. They have little slots cut out for them, so no problem. All right, I'm gonna go organize those and then that's gonna be it for, well, at least for me today. And then I'm gonna wait for my seal cutter to come in before we tackle this, this huge uh, RTV surface. So we'll see you in a couple days. All right, well, we are back and uh, it's been longer than I wanted it to be. We had some shipping delays, probably because it's like a week and a half from Christmas. But regardless, we, are, we got the tools that we need and specifically, we got the seal cutter. Now, we were able to take the lower oil pan off pretty easily with a box cutter because it's light. We can kind of jam it in there and not worry too much about it. Uh, no way we're gonna be able to do that with this uh, connection here between the lower, uh, excuse me, the upper oil pan and the block. So, bought a seal cutter. We're gonna use that to cut this off, pull it off, and then hopefully our front cover will finally come off. This is the seal cutter I purchased. This is actually uh, what was recommended right in the Nissan factory service manual. I, of course, didn't buy their specific tool. I went and bought one on Amazon. That was a heck of a lot cheaper, but we're just gonna lightly tap this in on the side and then basically run it down the side to cut that seal. I am gonna start with a razor blade and cut off you know, as much excess gasket as I can. And then that way we just have a, you know, a better surface to start on. Now bear with me, I've never used one of these before, but the instructions are pretty simple. They indicate you just line this up on the edge and you gently tap it in. I'm gonna start with a dead blow. I think that, you know, it just, it just seems wise. Well, this is interesting. This doesn't seem to be doing anything. I suppose it's possible that I'm being too gentle all right, so this is kind of unbelievable, and let me show you why. In the manual, they have a couple points in which you can pry. This is one of them. There's one up here, I believe, and there's one in the back, other backside. And watch this. Son of a It was that easy. Oh my gosh. I waited like four days, five days, to get that part in because I thought it was going to be way more difficult. I should have just went for it. I'm just gonna go around, pry it off. All right, so it turns out that this screw is in fact still being held in. So let me show you how we're handling that. So earlier in the video, this presented problems because we couldn't lift up. And sure enough, it still does have a couple threads in it. So I'm just gonna, uh, now that it's of course, gonna have more space because you can lift, right? So I'm gonna lift that, just pull it out that way. There we go. Now it's disconnected. Why is it not seeming to come off of something? Oh, there it goes. Woo! Okay. All right, set that aside. You know, there's a lesson here. Sometimes when I don't follow the manual, like trying to take the front cover off before taking off the upper oil pan, it bites me in the ass, right? It doesn't work out and I have to backtrack. And then when I do follow the manual, sometimes it also bites me in the ass, like waiting five days for a tool that I just simply didn't need. All right, let's keep going, folks. We're gonna take off the front cover now. Front cover should be nice and easy to pull off now. Shouldn't have any issue. And then uh, take the timing off. And then if we have time today, I'm gonna to also take off the head so we can get all the way down to the block 
and that will make the next video the block rebuild, the video after that uh, working on the heads, whatever, I don't know what needs to be done to them yet, but, and then the video after that will be reassembly, which is super exciting. So uh, let's keep going. All right, if you recall, we put in a couple uh, bolts here just to make sure that it you know, didn't fall off or anything crazy like that since we had most of the gasket removed prior to taking off the upper oil pan. So I'm just gonna take these four off and then we should be able to peel this right away. All right, so now let's take a look at this. Hey, look at that. Amazing how easy that is, huh? Once we, uh, once we do it the right way. I'm just grabbing my plastic scraper again to use as a wedge down below because uh, it's not fully removed down here. There it goes. Just need to pop that last bit there. Woo, all right. Finally. Oh, that looks good. There was another uh, dowel down here we couldn't see, uh, like a little guide pin for the front cover. So yeah, we didn't really stand a chance at taking this off uh, without taking off that upper oil pan. So I feel good about having to backtrack, it's fine. And uh, so here we have our, of course, our oil pump, uh, both timing chains that go up to each cam gear. And then of course down here, you're gonna see a sprocket on the front of the crank that's gonna have the, uh, the last timing marks and everything that we need to do. But I am actually gonna mark these. I know that it, you know we have top dead center from earlier and uh, I did a short on that. If you wanna know what top dead center is, just check out my shorts on YouTube. But we do have all new timing, you know, a timing kit, obviously. It would be insane to go <laughs> to keep this going after, uh, after taking it apart. But I am still gonna mark it and here's why. I'm gonna mark everything on this kit and each one of these has all of the you know, crazy markings that you're supposed to have on each gear. And then that way, I can just feel comfortable knowing that if I transfer all of the markings from this kit to the new kit, that it's, it's put on exactly the way that I took it off. All right, does that make sense? These should be keyed on the ends of each cam. Uh, I would be surprised if they weren't. And then down here, of course, you're gonna have a key on the crank. So theoretically, if you transfer the markings, and uh, everything is copacetic, you have all, everything marked the way it was, then you'll be fine. I'm still gonna you know, go through the manual, make sure everything is timed correctly, but I just have that, it's, it's, it's a me thing. It's a me thing, that's all. All right, next up, five bolts on the oil pump. And uh, hopefully, they're all 10 millimeter, hopefully they're all the same size. And if they are, we can just you know, bag and tag them as opposed to having to do any specific organization. So I'll let you know if they aren't the same size. Oh, they aren't, great. Uh, well, let's just see how many different ones there are. There's only uh, two sizes and one's really long. So if you put it in, it clearly won't fit. So uh, we'll be, you're good. These three are small, these two are long. Now, let's see if we can start sliding this off here. Woo, all right. That popped right off, nice and easy. This is actually a little collar that slides onto the crank and then the oil pump is keyed. Oops, I'm pouring oil everywhere, hold on. And then this is of course keyed, so when it sits in there and spins, it's gonna pump oil, right? So, uh, super simple design, of course it needs to be as to, uh, as to work forever. <laughs> See if we can easily get this off, yep, we can. Just slide that off with your fingers. This we're gonna set aside and keep. This does not come with the new oil pump. So we're gonna to have to clean this up and slide it back on when we do the reassembly. All right, so again, this is just, you know, paranoid old me marking everything off. We're not even gonna be reusing these parts, but I just want, I want a reference uh, where everything is in time. So I'm gonna mark the timing marks and the corresponding link on the chain. And there is colored links here. And you know, technically, if we were to rotate the engine, you could eventually get it to top dead center on cylinder one and the timing marks mark up, but I'm not doing that because I probably have sand in my cylinders by now. But uh, regardless, I'm gonna mark where everything is right now with the timing marks on the sprocket on the, can or on the crank and each cam sprocket and the corresponding links. All right, so if all else fails, and I'm too <clears throat> challenged, to read the manual and figure out what the timing is, which I highly doubt, but 
I'll always have this that I can reference. So there you go. Now we can start uh, taking this apart. So I'm gonna take off, uh, I think I'm gonna start with, let me think about this because we're not reusing these either. So technically you're supposed to like push these in and put in a retaining clip and all that jazz. And I suppose we could do that to show you how, but uh, I, let me see if I even have a retaining clip. If I do, I'll show you how to do it. And then that will of course loosen up the chains and we can pull them all off. All right, I don't, I can't seem to find a pin lying around, but I do have a uh, microscopic little Allen wrench that I think will work. It fits in the, in the front hole. So let's just, uh, let's send it as the kids say. I'm going to grab the little Allen wrench and have that available. I'm also going to grab some needle nose pliers for this little clip here in case I need it. And I'm going to get a flathead screwdriver underneath it. There we go. Squeeze this guy here and this should let us pull it in. Yep. There we are. Oops. Hold on. And now that it's all the way in, grab my little Allen wrench. Oh shit. It slipped. Let's do that again. Cause I keep slipping cause everything's covered in oil, obviously. So let me do that. Squeeze this little clip, push it in. There we go. And then not slip off this time. Slide this in. Yeah, there we go. That actually worked. Woohoo! So now that's loose and we can pull it off and remove that, uh, that chain guide and do the same down here and the right side is removed. Now you want to start, well, sorry, on the engine, it's the left side. So you want to start with the left side because the chain's in front, right? This chain's in front of the other one down below. So we want to remove this one first and then we can go take off the other one. All right, this bottom chain guide is in HW6, wow, that sounds fancy. So we'll pop that off. Ah, there we go. Whew, that wasn't crazy easy. And while I'm disassembling, I'm gonna pop this off and slide this right back in. And you know, technically I'm just, I'm gonna end up throwing this out, but I'm gonna set it aside for now. Same story down here. Pop these off, pull this chain guide out. There we go, there we go. Again, slide these right back in. There is a really pungent stink coming off of this stuff. It's like funky fried oil. There we go. With both of those out. Oh, well, on surprise that that skipped. That's okay. Be careful of that. Probably should have saw that coming. And then I'm going to go set this aside and just signify somewhere that it's, you know, on the left side of the engine. All right, for this one, this clip should hold it, should keep it from slamming out. Let's, let's see. Yep, there you go. So I'm just going to pull out my retention clip on here, pop this off. This is changing it up with an HW5. Normally you wouldn't want to let it blow all the way out like this if you're going to reuse it. Uh, I just did that because I'm throwing it out. Just run those back in for now. And let's go take the timing off on the other side. Nothing really special here. We're just going to sort of, not sort of, we're going to do a repeat of the other side. So I'm going to grab again, a little flathead here, wedge it in there. There we go. Try not to let it slip off. There we go. Put in our, there we go. Put our little Allen wrench. Perfect. Pop off the first chain guide. There we go. Just let that pop. If it's going to pop this one here should be, not as, yep, not as hard to do. Same with that one. Awesome. And then pull that out. There we go. Perfect. Pull the chain off. Come on. Oh, nice. There's gasket ran right up against the chain. Should be able to pull the chain out. There we go. Good golly. Oh, no. <gasps> what? The f this just randomly stripped out. I mean, it doesn't stop us from continuing, but just another thing to buy. Take that. There you go. That's what I thought. Here's what we do next. We are going to uh, start disassembling the cam assemblies and then uh, pull, the, pull the head bolts out and pull the heads off. Let's keep going. All right, we're going to remove our sprockets. And at this point, it's vitally important that we do not rotate each individual cam or the crank because this is an interference engine 
and if you rotate each any, or any of these independently, then you are going to uh, make them collide, and that would be a very, very unfortunate thing. So next up, we're gonna take off the cams and we're gonna take off the front sprockets. And to stop those from moving while we take them off, there is a portion of the cam that is sort of notched out that is going to allow you to slide a wrench on, and uh, that'll stop it up from rotating when you're pulling off the front bolt. Now I have a 7 8 wrench, and that wasn't big enough, so it looks like it's about one inch. So I'm going to grab a good old fashioned adjustable wrench and use that just to hold on to it. But I have uh, an impact that I'm gonna use on the front since I'm doing this alone. Normally you can just have someone hold this and you can use you know, like a breaker bar, but all my friends are like gainfully employed and stuff, so what the hell. But regardless, I'm gonna use an impact and pull these four off and I'm gonna mark them before I do it and then, uh, and then that's it, pull them off and set them aside and then we'll go take the cams off. All right, next up we're taking off our cams. And what's nice is the cam caps all have letters on them. Each one is individual, including the other side. So uh, for instance, that's T, T, U, V is here, which is awesome. So it's really nice of them to do that because you know technically you don't really have to keep them organized because it, the manual tells you how to put them back on. We do, however, have to take all this off in a specific order. So uh, we wanna start up here and then start down on each side, basically starting from out here and ending on the inside. So here's the order in which we need to remove them. And I'll show you both sides simultaneously with of course a little arrow indicating the front of the engine, but we wanna take off, effectively we're gonna start off with the front and then we're gonna pull off the actual cams themselves because the front here actually do hold on to the cams. So I'm gonna start by popping them loose in that order, then we're gonna back them out. All right, these are all gonna be 10 millimeter. So I'm just gonna blast through this in a time lapse and only stop if there's something noteworthy. All right, now this first cam cap is uh, held on with RTV, so even once you have the four out, you'll have to kind of gently pop it off. But I'm going to grab, where's this? Is that even, that even looks like. This is weird, oh, there it goes. There we go. I just kind of push back and forth. I pushed on the face of it like that and it came off. It has a little RH on the front of it, obviously for right hand. And so I'm not worried about mixing these two up. And this of course will have LH on it. So uh, now we're gonna go through and pop all these other ones loose and, and pull these out. I'm gonna take a picture here. I know that the manual you know, has this all written out for you and tells you which is which, but I would just want to be double sure because, uh, you know, just in case, just in case it's different. So I'm going to take a picture, make sure I have all these letters in good view, and then uh, I'll pull the caps. All right, so this is rotating more than I'm comfortable with, as in the cam is like, rotating inside when I start to get it real loose. So uh, I doubt it's gonna like fall out, but I'm paranoid, so I'm gonna do this. <laughs> Just rotate it so it doesn't, uh, so they don't fall out. So what we're gonna do is, uh, you know, mark these. I think these are already marked. Let me take a look here, all very gently. See, that has a five on it. This one has a one. And what about over here? That has a three, and I can't see the other one because it's rotated. So uh, I think they're already marked. So that's five, one, three, and then one more. But uh, I'm gonna get some like packing material, something soft that I can set this in so it's not sitting on any hard edges. And then we're gonna continue. like we might have to be replacing some lifters, but we'll talk about that in a little bit later. I think these come right out if my memory serves me. So we may not, yeah, they do, they come right out. So we can't repeat what we just did. We can't get the other cams uh, all the way vertical. 
I'll just tilt it a little bit and hope that they don't, uh, hope that these don't pop out. Well, no, because they're very specific. Ugh. It's fine. We're gonna, we're gonna put it back up in the standard V where it, where it sits right up or upright. And then we're going to uh, just hold them in when they, when they, before the cam caps come off. It's about as far as I'm willing to go. So we're gonna tighten this back down and then uh, just repeat on the other side, folks. There's nothing, there's nothing special here. Same story. So we have a bit of a weird situation. In here, the front of the, the head, there's uh, two bands basically that sit on both sides of the front of the cam and they slide on both sides of the front of the cylinder head. And the back has popped up, but the front hasn't. So I think it's kind of wedged in here. I, I can't, I literally can't lift it out. So for the sake of not doing any damage, I'm going to get the rear cap for that side, which is, this one here, yep. And I'm going to just put it back down and try to gently push the back of the cam down. So that way uh, it frees up the front here. So let's see if that works. There it goes, yep. So uh, I just gently, like I said, push down. And now this should uh, come right out. Excellent. All right, I also didn't remove the cam position sensor, but it doesn't, I mean, that, that wasn't the issue because this, this side was free. So I wasn't like binding against that or anything, but uh, if you wanted to, you could pull it off. That's a 10 millimeter and then just slide it out. Uh, I will be replacing that as part of this build because why not? Uh, but regardless, just so you know, that, that's out there. All right, we're down to the heads and I went and bought a 10 millimeter socket and that's what fits on these heads here or the head bolts that is and um, I bought impact grade you know just in case just in case we need to really get on these because I'm thinking we're gonna have to get kind of creative using a breaker bar on this stand I don't know how much pressure I can apply without flipping the engine over or rotating it whatever the case may be so uh, I'm gonna go through there's a bunch of garbage in the tops of each of the head bolts and so I got to clean those out before I uh, start this, but there's nothing really special here. There's just an order in which we need to remove them, which of course I'll put on the screen. And then uh, that's it. We take them out. And then I'm assuming there's gonna be some guide pins or some dowels that the head sits on. So even once these are out, it shouldn't you know slide off the block or anything crazy like that. We'll probably still have to pry it away. So I'm gonna clean these off and then we'll start popping them off. All right, here goes nothing. Okay, not bad. All right, so I'm just kind of rotating the engine, unfortunately. I don't really have locks on these wheels or anything like that, but I'm just gonna, I'm just applying like counter pressure with my other hand. Ah! There we go, nice. Ah! Ah! That went very smoothly, believe it or not. May not have looked like it with all my moaning and groaning, but it went really well. So now that they're loose, I'm gonna spin them out with an impact. All right, pull them all out. And I'm gonna replace these. So, and they don't have to go in a specific way anyways, but pulling these out. Be careful with these ones up front because you have these little uh, sections here that you don't want to hit. Okay, folks. Now, uh, we already have <laughs> antifreeze leaking. 
So uh, I expect some fluid to come out of here just from resting in certain areas. And uh, last time it was a deluge, but all right. So again, I'm, I, would be, I would be surprised if there wasn't some dowels in here. So you'll want to lift it straight away from the engine. And, uh, and that's it, have a place to set it. So have that ready. In fact, I don't have that ready. So have a place to set it down that's soft, that you're not going to scratch any surfaces. All right. I'm just wiggling it back and forth. There we go. Don't know why something up here is catching. There it goes. Woo. All right, lift it off. Go set it down somewhere safe. All right, repeat on the other side. Let's do it. Gonna have to finally take out the uh, cam position sensor back here. So just a quick 10 millimeter, back that out, and that should come out. Excellent. All right, yet again, it's getting so light. The, everything on the stand is getting so light that I'm just flopping it around every time I move it. There we go. Don't do this to me now, dude. We're so close. Come on. There we go. Hell yes, dude. Hell yes. All right, my dudes, we are down to just the block. I'm super excited about it. There's no major surprises here. The tops of the pistons look, you know, exactly how I'd expect them to. The cylinder walls actually look pretty decent. And, um, you know, I'll try to get some close-ups of that. It's a little bit difficult. I can see some cross-hatching still in, uh, in the ones that I've, you know, the ones that I can see without rotating the engine. But there's definitely some garbage in some of the cylinders that I have to clean out. That's uh, mostly because of my cleaning process up top. And that just recently fell in. So I'll make sure to get those cleaned up. But we're at a really exciting point. I, I'm so happy that we're getting to the point where we're actually gonna be able to start putting new parts on, cleaning it up and rebuilding it. So the next video is gonna be concentrating on the block and cleaning it up, tearing it down and uh, building it back up. And then another video is gonna be on the heads. Uh, not sure what we're gonna do with those yet. I don't have the uh, knowledge, experience or tools to work on cylinder heads here. So we'll do a few tests and then if we don't, you know, if we find that there's some issues there, then we'll have to send them out to get redone. Other than that, thank you so much for sticking with me on this. I think this is video six and we're already hours and hours of content in. So uh, thank you so much. If you want to support this build or the channel in general, there's a couple ways to do it. Go ahead and buy yourself a Ride the Car Guy t-shirt. You can, of course, subscribe for, to this channel. That's, that's the number one thing. And then also, if you, you know, found this video to be very helpful or if it saved you a lot of money, you can use super thanks to give me a tip down below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.